All right, guys, welcome back to the Landco podcast. I'm here with Matt Lynch, and uh, we're doing a, a property discussion on the uh, new listing you got in Peoria County, uh, 100 acres. So, uh, Matt, thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, thanks, man. Okay. I think I have everything pulled up that we need. So um, I've actually been on this property once, showed it like, I don't know, what that was a month ago or something. And uh, so I know a little bit about it more than I usually do when we chat about these. What sure. do we want to talk about? I mean, there's what? We have the lake, the building, the food plots, the timber, the hunting. What do you want to start on? Yeah, man. I mean, it's, it's hard to pick because this place really has it all. But I mean, I think the highlight of this place um, – can be narrowed down into a couple of things. It's got the conveniences if somebody wants to come and build a really cool, you know, country getaway, uh, and also the trophy deer hunting in Turkey that they're going to have the opportunity for. So let's start with um, the deer hunting because that's probably what I'm most familiar with. Got it. Okay. Um, well, then let's start with uh, the location because you hunt close by there, have hunted there for most of your life, right? So give me the rundown sure. of that area. Yeah, actually, um, within a half a mile of there is one of my family farms. Um, you know, we own a lot of property, but we've owned this place for over 20 years. Uh, and this place, like I said, as the crow flies, it's a half a mile away. I can personally attest to the quality of uh, deer hunting and turkey hunting that's in this area. We've taken several Boone and Crockett uh, caliber deer as far um, that I can say we've taken there. I've also got trail camera pictures of deer that are uh you know, Boone and Crockett, Pope and Young status as well as hitting the, uh, the 200 mark. So, uh, if anybody sees this piece and they're questioning the possibility to hunt for, um, you know, that caliber of deer, I can personally say that that area, um, it's got, it's got the genetics, it's got the, the numbers, everything is there for it. Nice. I'm going to try to bring up the uh, Google map because the um the area is pretty impressive let me see if i can bring in my uh laptop screen here sure actually you know what let's start with the um let's start with the aerial of it so i just pulled up yeah. and you can't see this which is kind of a pain uh in this kind of software but um this aerial that i have pulled up is from the south looking north so um okay what it looks like how many acres are there in the those bottom fields you know offhand I don't. I know there, there's a, a total of 13 to 14 tillable acres on the property. There's two smaller plots, and then there's a, a larger plot that's, you know, a little on the skinny side, but it, you know, it heads west quite a ways. Right. Okay. I mean, I guess they're probably, you know, at least two to three acres each of those plots, those smaller ones that you see. Got it. Okay. So let me try to pull up my... Um I just teased them with the aerial, but let me see if I can pull up my screen because all, the whole area is pretty legit. Like, man, there's a lot of uh, a lot of timber, small fields. All right, so I have the the Google Map pulled up. So give me the rundown of like the whole area. Sure. So I guess I'm trying to get my bearings here. If you go off to the west, I mean, if you take that long skinny field and go a little bit further west, yep. I know I've got another property in the area, but I mean. Right across the road there is Singing Woods Nature Preserve. So that huge block of timber that kind of goes off to the west. I mean, you're going to be pulling quite a few deer out of a, you know, thousand acre sanctuary that is over there. Um, holds a lot of deer. If you put any kind of food plot in this place, you know, with some decent, you know, food, whether it be greens or standing crops, you know, you're going to be pulling some deer in out of there. Also to the right, there's a lot of um, CRP which is bedding area uh, off to the east. You're going to be pulling a lot of deer out of there. I know the, the people that hunt up to the east off there. I know what kind of property they have. They get some big <clears> deer <throat> over there. It's, it's big buck country for sure. And if you set it up right, you're going to be pulling you know, some monsters in there if everything's done uh, the right way. Nice. Okay. Uh, it looks like even in the north, there's that whole area. I mean, we're off of what? Um, just north of Truett, south of um, Yeah, this, this property's on Santa Fe Road. So... Uh, speaking to the conveniences of it, I mean, it's right off tr through it, through it takes you right, right to Route 40, which will take you to Um There's a lot of conveniences nearby if you want, you know, that is an aspect of a place you want to buy. But you're kind of tucked back off in the country a little bit, so you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, seeing a lot of people if you don't want to. It's definitely, uh, it has the perks of conveniences with country living and uh, a lot of deer and turkey out there. Nice. Okay. Um, well, let's move on to the, um, so as you come in, like the first thing that I remember is that little, uh, that little lake, that pond there. Um, sure. 
So I'm going to try to pull up. I know I've got a couple pictures of it too. Um, sure. If not, I'll pull them up on my laptop. Yeah, it's really nice. It's a, it's a gated entrance into this place, and you come down a nice established road that takes you into there. Off on your right hand side, there's a nice wildlife pond, you know, with some fishing in it. It's probably just around an acre, I would say the the pond is. Okay. Um, you know, every time I see a property, I think, what would I do if I own this? If you go down that hill to the left, um, it kind of takes a little bit of that skinny field and some area over there. It is a perfect spot for a lake site. If somebody wanted to come in, build a giant lake, put a little cabin or a Morton building with some living quarters overlooking that, it's a perfect spot. You've got a great area to dam it up there and have it drain into the creek that runs through the property. It's just, it's, you don't get many places where you get that ideal spot to be able to build, you know, something you can live in and have a giant lake to where you can have some fishing, you know, have wildlife visited and just the views would be incredible. For sure. Okay. Um, so let's move on kind of as you're going through the property. So you come in the property, you cross that little, the dam of the lake, which you might, I was on the looking for something when you were talking there, but, um, did you talk about how can it be easy to, uh, raise that dam and, and get a little more acreage on that pond? Oh, absolutely. If you needed to, um, that whole area is pretty wide open right there. And, uh, there's lots of room to work with. So if you wanted to just take that pond as it is and just make that a little bit bigger, there's definitely room to work with there for sure without the dam set up. Yeah. Um, and and also, I mean, it's cool because, if you're maybe not wanting to build, you just want to be able to go out there and enjoy, you know, some fishing and hunting. If you continue up that path along the dam up the hill, there's a real nice Morton building. Um, it's actually, it's a Raglan pull, pull barn up there, but lots of storage to be able to put a boat, you know, uh, equipment, anything you want to, to be able to uh, make a trip down there and, you know, enjoy your time. For sure. Let me see if I can pull a picture of that. Um, or at least scroll to the website. I have my screen shared here. Um, okay. Well, there's the inside of it. Um, looks like, how big is it? Do you know? Oh goodness. I'd have to look at maybe 30 by 50 okay. approximately. I'm probably wrong, but it's, it's close to that. It's a good size. I mean, it can store lots of equipment, you know, some trucks were in there at one point. So somebody definitely wanted to park a boat, you know, some gators, four yeah. wheelers, uh, definitely plenty of space to be able to do that. And what do they have there? Is there... Are they on like a little solar? I remember seeing like a little video camera or security camera. Is it? Is there power some, back there? Like, security cameras are some um, lights that light it up. It's all on solar panel um, that activates that. There's also a big water tank on the back okay. of the building. It's, they wanted uh, that for a purpose. It's just it's a big wide open area up there. I mean, somebody could even build a little uh, house or a cabin up there, or build extra storage up there because there's a, at least two to three acres of extra space up there that, you know, is just wide open. Somebody can even put a food plot. Some of the best deer sign I saw was up on top of that hill that leads down to that skinny food plot. Okay. Um, let me see if I can pull up this video. of It's getting people a little better feel for it. Um, sure. I don't think I've ever tried to play a YouTube video from my screen while this happens, so we'll see how this goes. You know, I'll just say it's, it's properties like this that are rare because it's so diverse in the fact that you've got a nice fishing pond, a wildlife pond, if you want to call it, and yeah. a creek that's flowing along the entire property line. And you've got areas that are in crops not right now, but if you want to make them custom food plots, it's got a building for storage and it's got a spot where you can build a home that you know you can easily run electricity and put water on, close to can you know convenient, you know if you want to run to the grocery store and get food or gas. It's all around you. But you can still come out and you know be able to shoot, you know Boone and Crockett, Pope and Young deer every single year, and have some fun turkey hunting while you're out there. Yes, Just properties like that don't come up very often. Yeah. So what I thought was kind of cool about it, and tell me if we're gonna, we're missing something, but um, those fields at the bottom, they're like. Let me try to pull them up. I mean, I think the entire field. I mean, there's several good spots for food plots, but literally you could maybe not archery, but you could probably shoot across the whole field and most of it, right? For sure. And that's what I love about that bottom field is, you know, if you didn't want to turn it into a lake, if you just wanted that to be, you know, an ag field with maybe some greens tossed into it at one point or another, the entire field is only about 
45, 50 acres across. So really you could set up a stand anywhere across. That. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And if any, you know, deer were to cut through that field, you're going to have a shot no matter where they're at, if they come past you. Yeah. What's that back field in the South field? looks like a two or three acre or four acres, whatever it is. I never, I didn't make my way back there. Uh, how, what's back there? Is that CRP or is that just, looks like. It's another, it's another ag field. You know, it didn't get uh, planted this, this past oh, year. Okay. Um, the farmer didn't get to it because of the heavy rains that we had. Um, you know, just, they took the insurance instead. Yeah. Uh, really cool field though. It's got a little ridge that pours, uh, the timber kind of butts up to. So all those deer are going to be coming off that, you know, staging on that knob that's up there before they come into the, the food. Yeah. Really what, cool. what, what is that back to the, like the east, a, a little bit south? Is that what you're talking about? Kind of yeah. like a grassy area? Exactly. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It is really cool. How sloped is that? Could you do anything there? Could you open that up and point? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. If you wanted to, you know, keep it as, you know, a crop and then put a little, you know, miniature green field up on top of that to give a little diversity yeah. um, food on the place, it'd be a perfect spot for it. Um, and while I'm zoomed in on the, the aerial here, looking at that, the creek would be just to the north of that, right? Oops. Exactly. Okay. And does it go the entire property? It does. Okay. It runs uh, through that entire spot, kind of as you come into the property oh, around that, you know, the pond, it kind of starts here in that timber, as you yep. can see, and it, it cruises along the entire length of the timber through there. It's actually a really nice creek. Is it, um, what sort of crossing, like how big is it? What, just like a rock crossing to get an ATV across or what? You know, some spots, it's a little little deeper to get across. I was able to get, um, I crossed it three different areas as I was, you know, doing some of this footage. So it's definitely possible by foot. It's definitely possible by an ATV. Mm -hmm. uh, in some spots, you know, you've got a little bit heavier flow. Um, might be a little difficult, but it's a really nice flowing creek through there. Yes. Okay. What am I missing? Anything? Um, you know, there is harvestable timber in there. Uh, it's not been logged in a long, long time. So, I mean, if somebody's wanting to come in there and, you know, cover some of their expenses, there's definitely uh, areas that they could do a select harvest in and uh, make a little bit of money. I yeah. mean, there's a lot of timber on this spot. Yeah, for think, sure. You know, you if you look at the aerial, if you head off to the west, there's a lot of timber in there. Um, definitely a spot you could go in and, you know, <clears throat> if you kept it as an ag field, you can go and clear a couple areas and make some food plots in the timber, you know, a little hidden area to yeah. to some of those bucks that don't, you know, come into the wide open too often. So what's it need possibilities with this place? What's it need? I saw some, um, trails on the North side of those fields. Since I have trails throughout the, the big chunk on the West and kind of Southwest. It doesn't, it's got, it's got trails on the North end. Like you mentioned, um, you know, if it were me, what I would look to add to this place, um, I'd go in and, you know, create some trails on that West end. I'd probably do a hidden food plot in there after a select harvest and maybe look at, you know, some cover. I, I put some CRP grasses in there. I do. There's definitely, uh, the farmer does not plant all the way to the timber. So around those ag fields, if you're not going to build a lake, I would definitely do, you know, a green strip. Yeah. Give some for those deer coming out of the timber to be able to feed on. Um, other than that, you know, you've got water, you've got, uh, gentle sloping terrain through there. It's got everything that you need to to be able to go out and shoot a you know trophy caliber deer every year, as long as you you know make a couple of <clears throat> very simple alterations to it and just play your cards right. Nice. Should we um, now that you're talking about things that you want to do to it? Should we tease the uh, kind of new marketing uh, campaign or idea that we're testing with this property? Absolutely. I think the <laughs> more people we can kind of you know let know what's going to happen here, the better. Cool. So. Um, I know you know more about it than I do, but it's a, what essentially like your, um, what you would recommend to be done to the property in terms of development and uh, possibilities into a rendered um, like 3D, what? Yeah, Full exactly. video of the farm, is that how it works? You know, what I love so much about it, every time I step onto a property is my mind gets going. I think, what would I do with this place if it were me? If I were to come out here and own this place and want to be able to enjoy my time and, you know, have trophy hunting opportunities, what would I do to it? So we've kind of taken that into a computer program and kind of laid it out for people to say, hey, here's your possibilities. You know, you may walk onto a property and not see that, you know, this is possible, but anything is possible. So we kind of show you that by just... <clears throat> 
laying things out and kind of showing the possibilities of a place. It's really cool. Nice. Really excited. Well, so. we'll just tease it. We'll, we'll probably yeah. do a podcast um, about that kind of marketing uh, idea before we launch this Puri one. But I can tell you guys that I've seen like the rough draft and we're kind of working out kinks on it. It's our first one, but I've seen the rough draft and it's, it's incredible, man. Like it, uh, you can pull in the topography and all the terrain and put in food plots and it's awesome. So I'm excited about it. Um, when do you think that'll be done? Is that next week? Two weeks? I mean, I'd say first part of next week, we'll be ready to roll this thing out and kind of show people, uh, you know, just at least on one property, what this is about and kind of, you know, we'll be moving on to other properties from there after people see this, but you know, we'll kind of give them the, the layout of what it's like, you know, on one property here yeah. first and next week. Well, and this is a good one to do it because man, there's so many opportunities. Like for sure. It's, there's, it's, a good possibility of someone to build a house here. So like those views, what you could do to open it up. Uh, it's pretty cool. So, uh, you guys stay in tune, um, for that. Keep your eye open for that. We'll try to do the, um, kind of the intro to that new marketing idea early week next week and maybe have the, uh, what do you even call them? Like <laughs> rendering? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's, virtual it's walkthrough. Graphic rendering of a yeah. property. I guess you could call it. We need to come up with a more catchy name than that. But right. that's we'll the, yeah, that's the concept. <laughs> but uh, okay, anything else? What are we missing? No, Is man. I mean, looking forward to that, and then starting the uh, the year round Whitetail Hunter podcast next week too. Okay, well, cool. Well, Matt, thanks for joining us, and uh, you guys, thanks for listening. We'll uh, be back at you uh, sometime next week. Sounds good. Thanks. Yep.